Hey, welcome to Camping with Steve. Uh, crazy Neighbor lent me his Suburban, and today we're gonna be camping in it. Just an old-fashioned, back to the basics of camping in a vehicle. And we're gonna get a few things, get this set up, and try to find a good spot for us to camp tonight. In here, we have like the pure luxury stealth camping vehicle. Um, it is gigantic. I'm gonna be using this landscaping fabric uh, around the windows to cover that up. And I've got a big plush foamy in here. Oh, loads of room, loads of room. And it really doesn't stick out as too obvious of a vehicle. When I'm getting a vehicle set up to go stealth camping, I like to stop at a dollar store. Perfect for tape and stuff like that. And I always forget something, can opener today. Um, dollar store is a great spot to go for that. Right on. We got all the basics we need to cover up these windows for some kind of privacy here. And we're gonna go do that in a less crowded parking lot. So let's roll. I think this should work. There's some plastic here I can tape to that's not just the headliner in the Suburban. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just, give us a little privacy here and make us look slightly less suspicious. Right, I can actually tuck it up under there. I think I can tuck this right up here without any need for tape. This is gonna be great. Looks great. Is this for real? I've got this whole thing blacked out pretty much without using really a stitch of tape. This is the most stealth worthy vehicle I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Right on, not too shabby. I'll black out that back window in a little bit, but for now I'm gonna find a different parking lot to loiter in. Some of you won't know this, but I did live in vehicles for years. <laughs> uh, that was in my 20s, I guess, uh, late 20s, uh, to save money. You know, rent was always one of those irritating costs that was like more than half my paycheck. And I figured, bought a motorhome for cheap, park it in parking lots, um, lived in a car for a little bit too, and that really saved a lot of money. So uh, I've grown out of that now, but it's fun to do sometimes still. I'll need to get some lights for in there so I can see what I'm doing, because the sun's gonna set in like an hour and a half here. Many people have suggested red lights, and fortunately, we're coming up to the most wonderful time of the year here, so I know just where to get some LED red lights. When I saw these little guys, I got so excited. They're little dehumidifier things for motorhomes, and that'll help keep uh, some of the condensation off the windows today and make it look less like somebody is hunkering down in here. And of course, the challenge of finding a friendly parking lot is always difficult. Walmarts used to be a really good standby. They're getting a little trickier. A lot of them are just not wanting to deal with the hassle anymore because people don't leave, you know, they just kind of live there. Here at the Home Depot, things don't look promising. But I've got a few tricks up my sleeve and a few other places I gotta check out. Right. This Best Buy parking lot is so far the best I've found. There's a healthy mix of some stores that stay open a little later, some that close early, and there's a healthy sprinkling of some abandoned retail as well. So this one is a maybe. Yes, even good old trusty Walmart is cracking down on us. Okay, we've got a winner. I'm gonna park outside of the Courtyard Marriott here. 
I'm actually picking up a good Wi-Fi signal too, so we'll have internet, that's awesome. And all the signs they have up here just say, leave your vehicle at your own risk. They, uh, they don't say guest only parking, I'm sure it's implied. However, um, this'll do, this'll do real good. It's obviously far too early to roll in there right now. So, we're gonna go get some food so we can cook something up later on, and then we'll roll in there as soon as the sun sets. Still steamy. Awesome. We are all set. Got everything we need. Well, just chilling at Walmart here, waiting for the time to be right to pull into my parking spot for the night. But I'll get the back of this set up a little bit nicer here. I just kind of got stuff thrown in here. Well, it does feel quite warm in here, which is great because it's going to be cold tonight. What I always like to do is designate one door as the in and out door. The other side will be covered up completely. And we'll get this back window covered up here when we're ready to camp. But I'm gonna get these lights up and we're gonna see what they look like uh, in here. Well, this is a lot bigger of a string of Christmas lights than I thought it would be. But uh, we'll see how this lights up. I still got 46% power pack here. And we'll see how much these draw in watts and I'll decide how much I want to use them. That's actually not bad. Um, it's a little weird of a color, but uh, hey, it works. Um, they're only drawing six watts. Perfect. I will, I'm not gonna string them around like it's a Christmas party decoration. I'm just gonna kinda use them for extra light when I need extra light. And that'll be a lot less obvious than the cab lights in here. Okay. So I'm gonna hook up this power inverter. It's a 2000 watt guy. Took it out of the bus. That's what we were using uh, to run the air conditioner and everything. So that shouldn't have any trouble running these fine little gadgets I brought with me today. A sandwich press, because we're gonna be making some grilled cheese sandwiches in here. Yum, yum. And I got this rice cooker. I like them because this just draws a, a paltry 300 watts. So that's fantastic. I won't be cooking rice, but I will be warming up soup. Uh, should do the job nicely. So soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. I'll get this guy hooked up, but uh, it's got a massive inline fuse in there, so should be nice and safe. Whoa! Holy! Doesn't seem safe at all. Okay, turn it off. Ah, that doesn't even make a difference. All right. This guy out there collecting carts, and he's probably thinking, Steve, don't even try it. I do believe it's time for a little parking lot picnic. Do up some uh, creamy tomato soup, because grilled cheese sandwiches it's a classic. Never done a smoked Gouda grilled cheese sandwich, so I've got some backup processed cheese slices in case it's not as good as I imagine it to be. But. Hmm. Yum, yum, yum. It's so much easier than the condensed soups to have these ready to eat ones because I don't want to bring a jug of milk with me and start mixing a bunch of stuff in. So, rice cooker should do soup. Let's just get that going and the power inverter handles that readily. I don't even hear its fan kicking on. <laughs> and, uh, have a little more tea here while this cooks down. T is today's step too because we're in a vehicle and you can clearly see the issue if I were to sit in the car drinking a beer. That would be highly prohibited. While the soup is cooking away I'm gonna crack open these dehumidification desiccant things. Open like so. 
cooking is a major source of humidity. So cooking electrically on these, we're producing a lot less than if we were burning some type of uh, propane or butane or something like that. But it's still gonna give off some steam, obviously, because that's what good soups do. This got the soup warmed up perfectly. It's kind of a creamy soup and that worked good in here because it's meant for rice so it doesn't burn anything onto the bottom. Didn't have to continuously stir it like that little rocket stove I got. So, time to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Now these are well known if you've been in a dorm or something, a little sandwich press. And it should run just fine off of this power inverter. And good. Yeah. Smoked Gouda. Yum yum. Got this spreadable butter because out in the cold, it would just be impossible to actually spread butter. It's butter with canola oil. So it looks like it's half margarine, half butter. That'll work. Some slices of normal white bread. Baked fresh today. Oh, that is pretty good spreading butter type of product. I don't really know when it's ready to cook. Oh yeah, those are looking good to me. Seals them up nicely. Oh yeah. Ooh, melty goodness. Yum. <laughs> Classic combination. Tomato soup, grilled cheese sandwich. The smoked gouda really does a nice job in here too. Mm -mm. So, I'm gonna devour this wonderful little meal, then head back over to uh, where the spot is for the night. And of course, I have to give a huge shout out to all the kind folks that have donated to the beer donation fund. And, uh, hmm, obviously tonight that didn't go to beer, but there's more beer to come. Hmm. The, uh, these little guys you can use like a pie oven too. So, could have done a dessert with like apple pie filling or whatever, but, mm, simple things in life, good grilled cheese sandwich.
trying to find somewhere with not as much light on me. I think that spot might be okay. around freezing outside so 32 Fahrenheit 0 Celsius and I'm just gonna cover up this one last window here as good as possible oh, yeah. that's gonna be great um, do a quick spin around in here and show you guys what's going on of course Back is set up. I can kind of see out if there's a flashlight or something. And I'm gonna shut these house lights off here and basically instantly and begin the process of sleeping. It's okay. Um, for safety's sake, make sure the key fob is with me and that the door is locked. Good. We are all locked up. Now, um, I have had somebody actually open up a door on me once when I was sleeping. Um, it was back when I lived in my truck. And I was half asleep, and I could see them walking up and talking back and forth. And I could tell they're going to open up the back hatch of my truck because it didn't lock from the inside. And uh, anyway, they get up there, they swing the back open. And their eyes hadn't adjusted, I don't think, because they couldn't see I was in there. And of course, I just kind of like half woken up and I just say in a gravelly voice, like, looking for something. And they slammed that so fast and booked it. Like, they they were terrified. I don't think they've ever seen anything like that, uh, car hopping. So um, people ask about safety in these situations. I think, you know, nine and a half times out of ten you know they're they're just looking for something to steal basically so if the door handle gets pulled on a little bit they're just making sure you're locking things up and um, you know the odds of an axe murder like ripping the door open to kill you are probably pretty slim if you're parked in a decent location so location location of course and um, anyway that was the extent of my experience with uh, somebody trying to open up the door. I have had one knock on the window from a police officer and that was the very first night I slept in my car in a new city and pulled up, you know, right by the welcome to town sign and I was just catching some some Z's. It was the end of the day and yeah, uh, sure enough, the flashlight shining in the knock and he just asked uh, where we were headed, if we were okay. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're just fine. Just little too tired to drive on and he says okay that's all good and then strangely from years on after that I'd never had that knock on the window but unless they can actually see you um, you just do your best to pretend you don't notice them uh, and they they should go away eventually um, and that's my advice for that and um, anyway um, if you like these uh, if you just can't get enough of some grown man sleeping in his car you've come to the right place so uh please uh, subscribe to this and uh, see you guys in the morning uh, good morning that was too easy just gonna start this thing up and then we're gonna go find a restroom somewhere well, look at that not much condensation or frost on the windows at all Perfect. Here we go. This thing warm up a little. Yeah, that that window back there got a little bit of frost, but uh, yeah, that's not bad at all, really. Oh yes. Now this is textbook. A textbook stealth. 
smooth. So what I know about parking lots like these is usually at hotels around here anyways, they ask for a license plate when you check in, but that's just in case there's a problem with the vehicle, like, you know, you left your lights on or something. Um, there's some spots that do have parking passes, of course, because uh, some places just do. And I wouldn't attempt this, obviously, if you see parking passes on vehicles at the hotel. Um, but actually, you know, a quick phone call to the hotel, just ask them if they got free parking should suffice. But uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever had somebody come around at a hotel and uh, ask about somebody in a vehicle. Um, we park the motorhome all the time at hotels and there would sometimes be somebody sleeping in the uh, motorhome itself. Nobody really seemed to care. And one thing I did also is I cracked every window a microscopic amount so that air could get in but the window still looked closed. And I'll just turn them all up now. And that definitely helps with uh, any of the condensation inside. So I think that went really smoothly. The the Suburban is a fantastic vehicle for that. It's not what you'd expect for somebody to be stealth camping in. I've seen people do buses, or not buses really, but uh, minivans, full-size vans. Um, I've seen the odd SUV, but it's painfully obvious, painfully obvious when somebody's in there. Um, even to somebody that's not been living in them before, like you'll see normal blanket draped up over the window or whatever the case is. So. tea and actually well, I got guys on here we'll see if we want anything today um, in Canada they gave them all Canadian place names we used to have the real ones like boardwalk and stuff but I don't know so this is just a game piece for uh, Columbia ice field the other one come on be a sandwich or something no Niagara Falls so that's uh, <laughs> the way the game goes in Canada all Canadian names all right so, yeah, I think it's time to get home to my poor wife who's been <laughs> sitting there at home while I'm going to camp in uh, parking lots of hotels. So, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And um, change of scenery coming for next week. And I know I've been promising that for a while. Trust me. <laughs> I need to see some mountains. I need to see some uh, green. I need to see some coast. So, uh, yeah, westward, uh, beginning in a few days here. Cheers, everybody, and thanks for watching.